Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So I've been using the new 2021 Apple TV for a few weeks now and having coming from using the previous model, the 2017, I wondered was it really worth changing? What extra features do we actually get or are you better off just buying the new remote instead? And as most TVs now have all of these streaming apps installed anyway, is there really a need for this little box at all? Well today I'm going to show you what this new Apple TV offers including using AirPods to watch movies, screen mirroring and playing Apple Arcade games. Plus what the new remote is like compared to the old design, what I like, dislike and what I actually think needs improving. Right here's the box and just like with the previous model it's pretty small and compact. Inside the box we've got the new remote control which on first impressions it feels really really nice. Then we've got the new Apple TV box, the power cable, some instructions and finally the lightning to USB cable. And then the same as last time, there is no HDMI cable in the box, even though we need that to use it. So visually, the 2021 Apple TV box is no different to the previous model. It's still got the same design, weight, and even the dimensions of the 2017 model. I'll refer to the 2017 model as the Gen 1, as that is the first 4K model. So it's pretty clean and simple looking, but I do like the design, especially with the Apple logo on the top, and it's got these nice glossy sides as well. It'll obviously fit into any setup. As for the ports on this, well around the back we've got the HDMI, which is now HDMI 2.1 rather than just HDMI 2.0. This means it will be future proof for any 120 frames per second content. There's also the power port and the Ethernet port if you're not using Wi-Fi. Oh, and Wi-Fi has been upgraded on this, so it now supports Wi-Fi 6. So you've got the different options on screen now. It basically means that it's now capable of more bandwidth while streaming. Now they both support Dolby Digital and Dolby Digital Plus 7.1, have a 4K resolution, Dolby Vision and HDR10. Now the biggest spec difference here is the 60 frames per second on the Gen 1 versus the 120 frames capability on the Gen 2. This will support any high frame rate HDR content, so essentially any really fast paced sports like motorsports, that will be absolutely perfect for this. Now I have tried to get the Red Bull app to work so I can actually load some content in that kind of speed, but unfortunately I could not get that to work so I've not been able to test it out yet. Another change on the new model is the processor, so it's now got the A12 chip instead of the A10X chip that we've seen before. But I can tell you now I've seen no noticeable difference between the two boxes, so those new features of the chip and the new features of the high frame rate HDR, it's made no difference to my viewing at all. So the biggest change with the new Apple TV is actually down to the remote control, which I'll start by saying you can buy this separately. So if you do like the look of it and you're using a previous version of the Apple TVs, just buy the remote instead. Now this remote, if you buy it separately, will work on both the 4K and the HD versions from the previous gen. Now the new design actually looks awesome. I really, really like this aluminium casing and it's got this kind of sharp edges. It looks like a lot of the other products in the Apple lineup. So on the remote, we've still got the buttons like the home where it returns you to the dashboard or the home screen. We've got the back button to return you to the previous window. We've got the volume buttons that obviously controls the volume on your TV, your soundbar or your AVR. And then we've got the play and the pause buttons. And it still has this Siri mic at the top and the charging port at the bottom. And it's also got a dedicated power button. And this turns off the TV, your AVR and the Apple TV in one go. And the Siri remote has now been moved to the side, so you can actually access this with your index finger instead. And this is a lot easier than using the search functionality, but you can actually use your voice to search for things instead. But feeling this in my hand now, it feels like a real step up in quality over the previous gen. And obviously with those extra buttons as well, you can obviously control other devices as well a little bit easier. Now the previous gen, by comparison, I actually feel, it feels a little bit flimsy. It feels like you could break it really, really easily. But other than the overall look, feel and placement of the buttons, there's another big change here and that's the touchpad in the middle. So just like before, the centre of this click pad is touch sensitive and around the outside you've got the left, the right, the up and the down buttons. It means as you're moving around the home screen or you're scrubbing through a movie timeline, you can either use the touchpad to kind of swipe left and right to do so or you can use the actual buttons around it to be a little bit more directional and accurate. Now on the old remote I would use the touchpad quite a lot actually, but I would definitely found the new one to be a little bit more sensitive. Now that's a good and a bad thing because it means that it actually picks up input really easily if I'm actually trying to press the buttons instead of the touchpad, but it means when I am using the touchpad it's really really responsive. And this is how it compares to the older remote. So you can see here it's taller and the buttons have obviously moved up. And I'll tell you what, actually, the way that the buttons are placed now actually makes it a little bit easier to hold because your fingers are resting a little bit further up the remote. It's also a lot thicker as well. But I definitely prefer the overall design in both the way it looks and the way that it feels. 
To get the Apple TV set up, it takes literally a couple of minutes. So you plug it in using the power cable and your obviously your own HDMI cable. And then you just use any other Apple device that you've got. So like an iPhone or an iPad, and it will actually set it up automatically. So what it'll then do is it will use your account to log in to iTunes. And then if you've actually had a previous Apple TV before, like I have, it will then download all of the apps you had previously and lay it out in exactly the same way. So the TV OS is exactly the same as the previous model. We're not getting a whole new operating system, which is a shame, although it is pretty clean anyway. There's not a lot I would change here other than the option to maybe add your own wallpapers to the background. So across the top, there's a kind of a dock or a springboard, and this is where you can place your most used or your most frequently used apps. So I've got things here like Netflix and Disney, but any apps you wish to add here, you can just move them around. All you need to do is click and hold on the app, and then you just drag it around just like you would on your iPhone. And the rest of the apps around the home screen are all displayed across five columns. But again, you can move these around into any layout that you wish. You can even store apps in folders. So I've actually got all of my games that I'm using in a particular folder here. But you can put all of your TV apps, for example, or all of your entertainment apps into one folder. Just to kind of keep it a little bit more organized. So just click and hold on the app, wait for it to wiggle. And if you press the play and pause button, you get these extra options. And then you can either create or move it into an existing folder. And I've got an app here that I wish to delete. So again, you click and hold, press play and pause, and then you just hit delete. Now to jump between apps or to see what other apps you've got open, you can actually double tap the home button and you get this kind of task view at the top. You can either navigate through going between the different apps or if you want to close them, just swipe up and it will close those apps. I mentioned this one at the start. Now this is actually on the previous gen as well, but you can actually pair your AirPods to your Apple TV. In fact, you can actually pair two sets at the same time. Now this means if you wanted to watch a late night movie or stream some Netflix, well you can actually do that with the volume up without annoying or waking your children or your neighbours. And setting them up is really easy, just power them on whatever device you want to use, find and select them in the settings under your Bluetooth settings and you're good to go. Then as you're wearing them the movie will obviously play and as soon as you take them off the movie will automatically pause. Now this is such an awesome feature and then as soon as you put them back on it will just resume again. Now, if you're into playing Apple Arcade games on your iPad or your iPhone, for example, well, you can now play those on Apple TV. And this is just something that smart TVs just cannot compete with. And airplane from your phone to your TV just isn't quite the same. Now, you can use the Apple TV remote to play some of these games, but it is pretty difficult. Now, fortunately, you are able to pair either a PS4, PS5, or your Xbox controller straight to the Apple TV. Now, I've tested this on both the DualShock 4 and the DualSense controllers, and they both work perfectly. And once paired, you can play any of these games, and it feels like you're playing a normal arcade game on your console. And then as it's part of the Apple Arcade ecosystem, it means you can play it on your TV and then continue playing on your iPhone later. Hopefully over the coming months we'll see even more games added, especially with the capability of HDMI 2.1, we may hopefully see some games running at 120 frames. Now I've said this before but I watch a lot of movies, across all of the main streaming apps as you would expect, but what I really like about the Apple TV here is, and this isn't the same as smart TVs, is the way that it integrates with the other apps that are installed. So on the Apple TV home screen you can see here that it's not only got the Apple TV Plus uh, shows and movies, it's actually got other apps installed as well, so things like BBC iPlayer and iTV. Now this doesn't work across all of the apps, but the apps that it does work with it shows you what's up and what's playing next. This is like a really, really cool feature. It's also got another feature on here called What to Watch. Now, this is actually created by editors over at Apple, and this is actually handpicked and recommended for you. Now, obviously, if you don't have a smart TV yet, or you don't have a smart TV that's capable of all of the main streaming apps you would like to use, then this little box will give you all of the apps that you need in one place. And as mentioned before, this does support 4K HDR. So anything that I've watched through over the last few weeks has looked awesome. Whether that's been through Apple Plus or Disney Plus or Netflix, it's all looks really, really good. There's no limitations here at all. So you're getting everything that those streaming apps actually support. And talking about the picture quality of Apple TV, there's actually a new feature that they've implemented with the latest TV OS. We've all messed around with our TV settings and our picture settings on our TVs, trying to get that perfect picture. Well, now Apple TV will actually do that for you. So there is a feature built in and it will calibrate the picture settings for your TV. So it actually uses your iPhone's proximity sensor, the camera and the light sensor to read your TV's current picture profile. And then it will adjust it off the back of that. Now it doesn't actually adjust the TV settings itself. So any picture settings you've already got applied, it won't mess with that. It will actually kind of apply like a filter over the top of that through the Apple TV. So you place your iPhone about one centimeter from the TV itself. It will then read the image and the different colors it's displayed on the screen. And once it's finished, it will then give you the option to compare using the previous and the new calibration. So if you can see the differences here as I flip between the two, you can see the original and then you can see the calibrated option on the right. So there's a slight difference between the two. So I think it's a little bit warmer, but other than that, it's very, very similar. 
Now I've also shown this before, but you can actually airplay or screen mirror from your iPad, your iPhone or your Mac straight to the Apple TV. So I know that some TVs already support this. For example, the TV that I'm using, the LG C1, this already supports AirPlay. But there's definitely a noticeable lag when I'm using the TV version. Whereas on Apple TV, it feels instant. Now it's not something that I use often, but it is something that's very, very useful for either sharing photos or videos from my iPhone. This next one's for OLED users like myself who might be worried about burning. Well, with the Apple TV, it does come with an inbuilt screensaver. You can actually select what images or videos you wish it to play, and it will rotate through these. Some of these are really nice as well, and they auto-update so you'll regularly see new ones. Now, the App Store on Apple TV is actually pretty good. Now, most of the apps that I've installed over the last few weeks are the sort of apps you'd expect to see on your phone anyway. So you've got your streaming apps, you've got your Apple Arcades. There aren't many apps on there that you won't see elsewhere. But navigating around is really easy. Searching as well is straightforward. So if you've used an iPhone or an iPad, it's practically the same. Just search and download anything that you need. Now, this isn't something that I need to use at home, but the Apple TV does actually support multi-user. Now, this means that if you have more than one person who's using this Apple TV, well, you can actually sign in and use their profile instead. And that will then show the games or app progress that you're currently seeing. So all you need to do is press and hold the home button. And then you'll get this sidebar and you're able to change your account from here. So the new 2021 Apple TV is launched at the same price as the previous Apple TV. So you can get the 32 gigabyte option at £179 or $179. And the 64 gigabyte option is £199 or $199. So I've got the 64 gigabyte version here. But I've added about, what, 20 apps and 10 games to this. And I've used less than 10 gigabytes. So to be honest, I would just save that $20 or £20 and I would stick with the 32 gigabyte option. So the question is, is it worth going for a 2021 Apple TV if you've got a previous 4K version or if you don't have one at all? In short, I think the UI, the available apps and the Apple Arcade are worth having an Apple TV for. I mean, sure, most TVs, including the one that I'm using here, already have the streaming apps built in, but they don't offer the same experience. They don't look the same. And obviously you don't have that app store as well. And you certainly cannot play any of the Apple Arcade games if you wanted to. But if you've got a previous version of the Apple TV, say you've got the 2017 Apple TV 4K, I wouldn't bother upgrading. I would just buy the new remote if you like it for £55 or $59 and I would just be happy with that. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. If you drop a 2021 Apple TV in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up as I know you're still here. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.